What's up, everybody, and welcome back to the Middle Level Media channel, your hub for everything physical media and entertainment. I am Ken here today for another very ambitious review series video. Um, so I have in my hand right now, guys, the Underworld 5 film collection right there, guys. It's right there on top. I already got an unboxing of this very impressive set from Sony Pictures on the channel, so go check that out if you haven't already and you want to see the contents, the full contents of this packaging. But, you know, I really didn't know if I wanted to dive into this just yet and do reviews on it. I mean, the month of October has already passed, um, so I didn't know if I wanted to go back and, and watch these films. But then I thought to myself, maybe I'll just watch and review one. But um, then I was like, you, you know what, if I'm going to pull the top off of this set, this very impressive, beautiful, gorgeous Sony Pictures Underworld 4K collection box set um, and pull out the first Underworld movie right here, guys, right here. There, here it is. Here it is. The first Underworld movie. If I'm going to watch this, and I'm going to get my thoughts on it. You know what? Damn it. I'm going to I'm going to pull out all of them and I'm going to watch them all and I'm going to give my thoughts on all of these movies for you guys, because that is what you guys deserve from this channel. So yes, I am going to try to tackle all five of these movies in one video, do it and do a review for all of them. Give my thoughts on the movies, give my thoughts on the transfers. Um, I did this with the Halloween 4Ks and it went pretty well. I liked the way that that turned out. The video did well. You guys seem to enjoy it. So let's see if you all enjoy me doing, uh, giving the Underworld 4K collection the exact same treatment. But I'm going to be honest with you. I am a little nervous. I'm a little scared by this because I know that I knew the Halloween films very well. They're like some of my favorite movies of all time. I really don't know anything about this franchise. Like I've seen the first film back when it came out back in 2003. Um, I don't even think I saw it in theaters though. I think I rented it on DVD from my local video store. Um, I, I, I don't even remember if I liked it. I think I did. But, you know, then again, I didn't go back and rewatch it. I didn't watch any of the sequels. So how much did I really like it? So, yeah, I don't know much about it. I know that Kate Beckinsale is a star of most of these films, except for Rise of the Lycans, which people made sure I knew about um, on the unboxing video. Although they said that she was in the last uh, few minutes of the film. But we'll see. We'll see how much Kate Beckinsale is in that movie. But, yeah, I, I know Kate Beckinsale is a star. I don't really know who like directed any of these, if they're all like done by the same director, if they're all different directors. Um, I mean, it says right here, screenplay by Danny McBride. Really? I, it, the Danny McBride? I had no idea that he wrote the first Underworld. That is actually kind of interesting. So there, I'm, I'm learning a fun fact right here and right now. Danny McBride wrote the first Underworld. Did he write the other ones? I don't know. So I don't know who directed these. I know who wrote the first one now. Um, I know that the first one came out in 2003. I know that the last one came out in 2016. So it spans over 13 years for this franchise. I know there was a video game. I know there was a short film. I know that this uh, series grossed like over 500 million on a 200 million budget. Um, so yeah, I guess I do know some things. I know some things. I know that there's five movies. Uh, but yeah, I just, I, I know it's about werewolves and vampires fighting and warring with each other. I know that. Um, but yeah, those, those are the things that I know. So everything else I, I really don't. I'm going this, uh, into this absolutely blind. So, um, I'm going to come back after I watch all these. So first I'm going to watch Underworld. Then I'm going to watch, uh, Underworld Evolutions. Then I'll watch, you know, Underworld Rise of the Lycans. I'll watch Underworld Awakening. I'll watch, um, and then I'll watch Underworld uh, Blood Wars. So I also know that these are pretty much like panned by the critics. These really don't have great review scores, but you know, they did pretty well at the box office. So I am kind of excited. I, I, I've heard good and bad things. I, I've heard that they get worse as they go. So um, I reserve the right at any time. I'll say this right now, just so you guys aren't disappointed, but I reserve the right at any time if I want to tap out of this franchise, I'm, I'm going to tap out and I'm going to bow out gracefully and I will give you my thoughts on whatever I watched um, and then I'm done. I'm out of here, but we'll see if this can hold my attention. We'll see if this can hold my attention. You'll know. You'll know when you click on the thumbnail if I did all these because I'll advertise which ones I'm reviewing. But yeah, the Underworld 4K collection. I, I told you guys I'm nervous. This is going to be a weird video. 
I like doing videos like this, just kind of off the cuff, not really that scripted. Um, you know, I'll take I'll take a few notes as I go and stuff like that. But I don't know. It's uh, it's Sunday nights. I've, I've worked like 14 hours today. I'm gonna try to watch two of these tonight. I'm gonna watch the first Underworld, come back, tell you my thoughts. Then I'm gonna go straight into Underworld Evolution. Do the same thing. We're gonna go back and forth. I don't anticipate the amount of time that I'm going to cover each one of these is gonna be very long because, I, I, like I said, I don't have this like deep-rooted love for these films like I did Halloween. So I'm gonna give my brief thoughts and opinions on the movies and the transfers, and then we're gonna jump right into the next one. So if you're ready, and I, I think that I'm ready, um, let's get started with the first Underworld and see where that takes us. All right, so my Underworld 4K journey is about to begin. Um, I chose to start with the theatrical version because I've got five movies to watch and I don't have time for the extended, but let's get into this, guys. Look at Kate Beckinsale with that moon. Oh, my goodness. Just finished the first Underworld movie on 4K and just... You know, my quick thoughts, my instant reaction to this movie is it was pretty good. Um, I I had fun with this one. It was a, a little bit too long, I think. Um, I really enjoyed the last hour, but it took a little bit for me to really get into this movie, to get invested in these characters. I think the two-hour runtime was a little bit too long. I'm really glad I didn't uh, pick to watch the extended edition. And from what I can tell... Um, all the sequels are uh, around an hour and a half, hour and 40 minutes, so they should be um, much uh, easily easier to digest, much more digestible uh, films, I guess is what I'm trying to say. But no, I enjoyed this film quite a bit, guys. And like I said, I've got some notes written down here, um, but I'm going to try to keep this mostly just off the cuff, just giving you my quick thoughts on the film. First off, guys, you know, Kate Beckinsale, I thought was really good in this film. Just kind of really uh, doing a great job just kind of playing that stoic, like, badass, heroic type character. I just thought she was absolutely awesome in this movie. She wasn't taking uh, no shit from anybody. You know, they wanted her to put a dress on at the beginning for the big ball, the big dance with all the fancy vampires coming in. She wasn't having none of that shit. She, she rolled out of there. She was just, she was consistent. She was a badass the whole way through. And I really enjoyed her performance and her charisma. Um, and just how she carried herself throughout this film. So yeah, no wonder why they based an entire franchise off of her and this character of uh, Celine. Um, she was just completely uh, awesome in this role. So Kate Beckinsale is a plus. And one thing that I need to, to let you guys know real quick, because I was wrong. I did some research. Danny McBride, um, who was in Pineapple Express and wrote the new Halloween. That's why I thought that maybe it was a possibility. But it's not the same Danny McBride. It is a different Danny McBride that wrote um, this film. So he wrote this film along with Lean, uh, Lean Wiseman, uh, who also was the director of this film. And I think is the director of the next film, Evolution, as well. So they wrote this script together. Um, or I think Danny McBride wrote it by himself, but they all came up with the story together. So... Um, you know, another thing about this movie, guys, I appreciate the world building involved here. Just the kind of, uh, you know, bringing together of the werewolves and the vampires and just they have this real elaborate like backstory. Um, I'm intrigued. Like, I'm interested. I don't feel like they gave enough away in this to make me feel satisfied uh, by the conclusion of this story. But the fact that there's four more movies to kind of get more into the lore of this uh, of this universe, I'm intrigued. I'm interested. I am looking forward to actually now the other films and just kind of uh, getting more into this world. So if the job of this movie was to get me further invested in the Underworld franchise, then it did its job. And now I'm actually kind of excited to get into Evolution now and just kind of see uh, where this story goes because they do leave this movie. There is an ending to this film, but they do kind of leave it open-ended uh, for another film and it kind of hooks you and is like, oh, what's going to happen now? So I do like that. I appreciate the world building. It's got a really, really cool aesthetic to it. Um, of course, you know, this was made in the early 2000s. It was around the time they did the first Resident Evil. The Matrix movies were, 
were a big thing. Really hyper stylized. Kate Beckinsale spinning slowly as she's shooting and you see the, the gun shells flying to the ground and just the way they kind of shoot the stuff. The ground's like flying off of the, as she's shooting the bullets into it. It all just kind of feels very Matrixy, like the scene where Neo and Trinity go into that building at the end of the Matrix and they're shooting and then the line debris flying everywhere. There's like several instances of that kind of stuff. It just feels very like stylistically of that matrix you know resident evil era so you know it's you could tell that they were really trying to go for that tone um and that style with this one so um things i like yeah so i got some says the set design was really cool like i liked like the gothic set design just how they kind of showcase like the vampire layer where they were um in the beginning just how they set it up with showing kate beckinsale um, the costumes and stuff like that that she was wearing, you know, with the cape and how she's standing at the end of that tunnel. It all just looked really good um, just as far as like the aesthetic and just the set design of everything. Like I said, good costumes. There's some really good action in this movie, some really cool like set piece moments. Like they start off with a big action sequence. So right away, they kind of just draw you into this movie. So those are the things that I liked. There were some things that I did not like in this movie. It was not perfect. Um, or not even like really dislike, like it didn't bother me a bunch, but there were just things I thought they could have done better. Obviously, I'm not watching these movies for like really great writing, um, but the writing is not great. So I do think, feel the need to point it out. The dialogue isn't great. It's all really like exposition based, which I appreciate, you know, to kind of help me get into this world and understand what's going on. But it's, it doesn't feel like, like really like personal dialogue it doesn't really get me um invested in like the relationships of these characters like i don't really feel any i'm interested in them and their story and where they're going but i'm not necessarily like um interested in them emotionally if that makes any sense i don't really care um about kate beckinsale's family and whether or not you know who who killed her family or whatever all that stuff it didn't really hit me in an emotional way. And I think that if they had a little bit better dialogue and writing, I think they could have kind of upped that emotional charge in some of those sequences. So as far as the performances outside of Beckinsale, maybe um, Michael Sheen as Lucian was pretty good. I thought, uh, you know, Bill Nye as Victor was pretty, was pretty strong as well. They were capable actors that I thought pulled off their roles well. Um, Scott Speedman, I, I didn't really enjoy in this movie at all. I didn't think he was that good. I really didn't think he had great chemistry with Kate Beckinsale, uh, which definitely, I, I feel like the movie, uh, would have been a little bit better if he would have had better chemistry. Cause I felt like that relationship kind of, um, the movie kind of hinged on that relationship in, in certain sequences. And I didn't feel, I feel, I didn't feel like it hit as hard as it could have. They had a little bit better chemistry together. Uh, Shane Brawley as Craven was just bad. It's just, a, just a bad villain, uh, that I really did not give two shits about. Um, then he has like a girlfriend in there who kind of helps Kate Beckinsale at one point, but then like she doesn't really, and she was bad. Everybody else, all the other characters in this movie, they just, they, they weren't really good. They were just kind of saying their lines and doing their things. But yeah, again, you know, I'm not really looking for Oscar winning performances in, in the underworld movies. The werewolf scenes, the transformations looked very goofy. They're very CGI based. It's very much that early 2000s where they thought they could just overly CGI everything and it was okay. So I didn't enjoy the werewolf transformation scenes. You know, I've seen movies like The Howling. I've seen movies like American Werewolf in London, even Silver Bullet. I've seen great transformation sequences. So I, when I see a bad werewolf transformation sequence, it's it just kind of takes me out of the experience a little bit. So not great transformation sequences, you know, and they even do the thing that they, they're even trying to pay homage to American Werewolf a little bit because they even do like the tunnel sequence where they're like running in the subway station. Um, they do that like, tracking shot, the same one like from American Werewolf. So you can tell they're trying to pay a little bit of homage to the past films. Uh, without like completely, you know, ripping them off. So the fact that they did that just kind of really just put the icing on the cake of, yeah, this isn't good um, as far as the effects work. So werewolf scenes isn't good, but you know, early 2000s, you kind of expect that. So overall guys, again, I'm not trying to be negative. I'm not trying to nitpick. I just want to kind of give my thoughts on the film a little bit. I, I'd give this movie a 3.5 out of five. I'd say we're off to a good start. 
I enjoyed the Underworld movie. I am interested in this franchise moving forward into Evolution and Rise of the Lycans. Hopefully, they keep me engaged and hooked with Evolution. So, as far as the transfer, guys, this is the same. I know a lot of people were saying that, like, how does this one stack up to the 2016 one, which I assume they released uh, with the last Underworld film. Uh, Blood Wars that probably put it out about the same time. Uh, the transfer is the exact same as the 2016. So if you had that 2016 transfer, this is the exact same. The only difference is you are getting the extended version on this uh, 4K disc and you did not get it on the previous 4K disc. So exact same transfer, but this was the first time that I was seeing this in 4K. The first time I ever saw it in Blu-ray. I've never even seen this movie in Blu-ray. So I thought it looked phenomenal but like the the aesthetic of this movie just lends itself to a, a great 4k transfer i think i mean you got the black um and the blue aesthetic just like the this entire movie takes place at night and i don't think there is one daytime sequence so it looked phenomenal the level of detail looked phenomenal the faces uh looked great like uh, you could just really see all the details and definitions i think that's why the werewolf transformations hit me particularly bad because i could just notice everything um in those transformations but yeah just a really strong uh hdr here with the with the blue and the black aesthetic just the contrast levels are just so nice um and all the colors are vivid and, and stuff and it just it it looks incredible it, honestly like it just one of the better uh 4k transfers that i've seen for sure so uh but again this is the same transfer back uh, in 2016 so as we get into the other ones we're going to start seeing that we're going to see those movies for the first time in 4k um this does have dolby atmos as well um as far as the packaging i've already shown this off in you know previous unboxings but you get that classic underworld poster right there I'll zoom in and show you all the special features on the back that's included in this release. These are all previous special features as well. Um, open inside, you get discard on both of them, which is really nice and appreciated. You do get some alternate flashbacks that are in 4K HDR. I don't know if that's new or not, but um, I watched a couple of those. You get theatrical trailers. Like I said, you get the theatrical and extended versions of this but yeah on the blu-ray disc you get a bunch of special features extended version of the film director and cast commentary fang versus fiction seven featurettes music video just all kinds of stuff so um another thing uh, negative just uh, the score it was incredibly generic it's just like it, that kind of uh, early 2000s like techno uh remix so uh but yeah guys i didn't mean to be talking this long about the first underworld so let's go ahead and uh let me get this out of the package real quick like i said this video is going to be super casual um but yeah let's go ahead and dive into underworld evolution i'll come back and get my thoughts on that one all right guys i am chugging along on my underworld watch through and yeah k look k beckons there looking pretty badass right there them guns akimbo Looking like she going to kick some butt in this one. Let's go. All right, guys. So we are moving right along and we're getting ready to talk about Underworld Evolution. Just finished watching this one. And what I can say, guys, so far, so good. I am still enjoying myself with these movies. Of course, I'm going to get into my um, likes and dislikes. I'm engaged. I'm impressed by the visuals. Um, and they're exciting. They're exciting. I'm enjoying the Underworld films. But let's get into talking about this one. This movie came out... In 2006, starring Kate Beckinsale, Scott Speedman, once again, both returning uh, to this franchise. We also have the same director, Lynn Wiseman. We also have writer Danny McBride. That is not uh, the Danny McBride that we all know and love. It is a different Danny McBride. So yeah, getting into my likes on this movie, guys, what I liked about it was that it, it followed up where the first one left off, which I always love with movies. I love how Halloween 2... Uh, picks up right where the first one left off. I love Back to the Future Part 2. Picks up right where the first one left off. This one does a very similar thing. It, it, it starts where Kate Beckinsale has just killed Victor, the villain from the first film, and his blood kind of drains um, into the floor of their uh, vampire lair hideout, and that brings the other um, vampire, the ancient vampire, back to life, uh, Marcus. And he is our new villain, um, in this movie. So I also like how they kind of dive into more of the backstory with these uh, characters and just how this war started between the Lycans and the vampire. You get to see Victor and Marcus kind of in their prime hunting down 
um, lichens, werewolves back in the day, like in the old ancient times. I think it's like the 14 or uh, 1500s or something. But I like that, how they dive more into that backstory. This movie really feels uh, more fantasy driven than just like stylistic action like the first one was. But Selena, Kate Beckinsale is back. She's still a complete badass in this movie. She's very believable and just pulls off those action sequences very well. You know, we still got some solid action sequences and some really impressive sequences of action in this movie. There's some nice gunplay um, in this movie. I feel like there's more gunplay in this than there was in the previous one, but I could be wrong. It just felt like there was more like shootouts and stuff in this one than there were in the, uh, in the previous film. So getting into my dislikes on this one, I have a few more dislikes with this one than I did, uh, the first one. Overall, I would say I like this one slightly less, uh, than I did the first installment. So the new villain, Marcus, like when you compare him to Victor and just Bill Nye's performance, um, as Victor, he just uh, much more gravitas to his performance. There's much more weight to it. He just feels more menacing in that role. Uh, Marcus is very generic. He's very boring. Uh, there's really not a lot to him. Yeah, he's got the brother. He's the kind of like the, the first, uh, uh, the hybrid or whatever the hell's going on. I'm still not exactly sure. Like there's like a, a hybrid, a guy that's like the first hybrid. And then he has like two sons that are, one's a vampire and one's a werewolf, but they can also, uh, be hybrids as well. There's just a lot of different, uh, things going on with these movies. I, I'm, I'm still kind of unclear, um, about all that stuff. And that's another thing I'll say with the, with the negatives. The, the plot, I think, gets a little bit too convoluted in this one when you're dealing with like all the factions. And there was some turning on each other and stuff in the first one, but it really just leans into it with this one. You don't really know like who's on what side as you're like, you know, Kate Beckinsale's good. And that's like all you really know. So everybody else is like, it feels like they're just constantly turning on each other and flipping the table on each other. Um, and Kate Beckinsale is just like, she's like the one like true good uh, force in these movies. So yeah, it's just, it's way too convoluted. There's factions, everybody's turning on each other. Everybody is a hybrid. Apparently they can like drink each other's blood and like look at their like memories and things like that. It's a, there's just a lot of like new elements that are introduced. I believe like way too fast without too much explanation. And it kind of just leaves you with your head spinning a little bit. And also in this one, you got Scott Speedman back as uh, you know, Kate Beckinsale's love interest, the, the hybrid from the first one, the one that got bit by the werewolf and uh, the vampire in the first one kind of became the hybrid. He, he looks really silly when he turns. He's not menacing or cool at all. Like that design that he that he has when he turns into the vampire werewolf thing, it's just not a very, very impressive design to me. But he's back being uh, generic and plain and, and boring as ever in this one. Zero chemistry with Kate Beckinsale. They even have a love scene, a sex scene that's probably like five to 10 minutes long. And you can really tell that Kate Beckinsale probably signed a no, or more likely signed a no nudity clause because you get like maybe a tiny bit of side boob in that sex scene and the rest is just like Scott Speedman like, on top of her like moving around and you can barely see any part of Kate Beckinsale, which was very disappointing, easily the most uh, disappointing part about this movie. But um, yeah, Scott Speedman, he's, he sucks, uh, just to be honest. So um, it also felt like they used a little bit more CGI in this one, which kind of makes sense. This was the mid 2000s, so they had a little bit more to work with, more new technology, I guess, but it doesn't feel like um, it aged particularly well. It didn't look like it aged particularly well in this one. So you had a lot of transformation scenes and stuff. So another thing that kind of disappointed me is this is a franchise that's like set up, like based on a war between werewolves and vampires. You don't really get a lot of werewolves in this one. You get one, uh, big like werewolf fight at the end. Um, William, that, that Marcus's brother. But besides that, there's really not a lot of werewolf action that there was in the first one. I think a lot of it has to do with, again, like factions turning on each other. It's really this, this is the story of Kate Beckinsale, um, Selena kind of fighting her own kind, like all the vampires turned on her. So she's trying to discover the truth, figure out what's going on. And she's, she's fighting more of the vampire clan, like her own kind than she is the werewolf. So I'm hoping with the next one, we're going to go back with the origin story and we can kind of see more of that vampire werewolf action, because I think that that's the strength of what this franchise is really built on. So I'm looking forward to that in the next one. So overall guys, 
I still enjoy this one. Like I said, I'm still having fun with the franchise. I'm still engaged. I'm still interested in what's coming next, especially with the next one, because I know we're going to get a change of pace. We're going to go back and do like a prequel story. I don't think Kate Beckinsale's in it. What I understand is going to be Victor's daughter that's the lead in the next one, alongside of uh, Martin Sheen, who was Lucius um in the in the first one so that should be interesting because i liked him in the first one definitely want to learn more about that character so i'm interested in diving into uh rise of the lichen so yeah as for this movie though guys i liked it less than the previous one so i'll give this one a three out of a five again it's still good it's still entertaining i had fun with this movie but there was just more stuff that i disliked about this movie um than the first one i'll say but getting into the visual guys the 4k visuals of these very impressive. We are continuing on a hot streak with these 4K visuals. Um, everything looked fantastic, like right from the beginning. Like you just notice, like all the facial details in Kate Beckinsale. There's a lot of this movie that's set in like that has like a wintry setting, so it's like snowing. There's a lot of ice. I guess it's like set um, in the winter months, so there's a lot more white in this movie than there was the first one. The first one was really like blue and black. This is more or less like white and black with some blues in it as well. So the, the blues are much brighter in this one. So the HDR, it just pops even more, I believe in this one than it does the first one. No complaints on the visuals um, here whatsoever. Getting into the audio, you got the Dolby Atmos as well. So I'm just listening to it on a soundbar. So can't really experience the full benefits of that audio. But yeah, Dolby Atmos for anybody who is interested in that special features? You got a ton of special features um, on the Blu-ray. You also got a few on the 4K. Actually, I think with this one, you might not get any on the 4K. I'm not seeing any on the 4K like I did um, with that first Underworld movie. So yeah, this is a brand new transfer, brand new first time on 4K for Evolutions. I thought it was an absolute um, home run. They knocked this one out of the park for sure. Getting into the packaging a little bit. Again, already did an unboxing for this. Go check it out if you want to see the full contents of everything on here i'll leave the link down in the description below but um yeah i guess uh so far so good uh we're gonna get into the third one then we're gonna come back and we're gonna talk about that one and uh hopefully i will feel i will still feel engaged enough to continue on with part four and five so let's do it all right guys let's get right into it because i just finished underworld rise of the lichens and yeah this is the prequel origin story in this franchise that goes back and tries to explain um, just where the feud between the Lycans and the vampires began. And you got some returning characters in this movie. You got Bill Nye as Victor. Um, you got uh, Martin Sheen as Lucius. And um, yeah, this is basically goes all the way back to centuries before the events of the of the first two films and just tells you all this stuff, all the all the stuff that you've gotten in kind of like bits and pieces in the previous two films. This goes back and really just fleshes out um, that story. And I appreciate this movie uh, for doing that. And it really just makes me appreciate, I think, the first movie a lot better, just what they were doing in that first movie and how they set up all these different relationships and angles. And you, you, you just tell that they really... Uh, took the time to think about it and it was like, we're going to make this kind of lore in this universe and it's really going to, um, you know, lend itself well to like sequels and prequels and just an entire extended universe of uh, Underworld movies. So they're very smart when they set up all these characters and the relationships and stuff because this one tells a story of Victor, you know, the big vampire leader, his daughter, Sonia, um, her relationship with Lucius um, in this film. And yeah, I, I enjoy this movie. It is, I feel like, for the story it was telling, like it was an ambitious story, like the rise of the Lycan werewolves from like um, basically kind of like the scrubs of this world. Like nobody respected the werewolves. They were, um, you know, they're just there to be pets, to be uh, slaves to the vampires. And this tells the story of, you know, Lucius kind of taking those werewolves and kind of, um, you know, motivating them to rise up against the vampires. Um, so I, I appreciate this movie. There's a, it has a lot of ambition to it, but I think for the story it's trying to tell, it's a little bit too short. And I know I said about the first one, it was a little bit too long, but this one's about an hour and a half. Uh, I think maybe they could have fleshed out this story just a little bit more and added a little bit more to it. It's also really a love story at its core as well between, um, Sonia, uh, and I think I'm saying her, Sanja, is it Sonia or Sanja? I, I butcher every single freaking name that I say on here. But uh, again, this movie doesn't have Kate Beckinsale in it, but she's kind of fulfilling that Kate Beckinsale role, which makes sense because they say in the first film that Victor 
uh, saved uh, Kate Beckinsale, Celine, um, didn't turn her after he murdered her family because she reminded him of his daughter. So you can absolutely see that they, they cast this uh, uh, character based on the appearance of Kate Beckinsale because she looks just like Kate Beckinsale. So yeah, the, um, the girl that plays her, I'm trying to see right here, guys, is Rona Mitra, which she, she's been in a few other like straight to DVD science fiction films, some other films from the early 2000s. Uh, she doesn't really have a, the most impressive IMDb, but I tried to look and see if she was in anything else. Directed by Patrick, uh, Tatopoulos. Uh, I think it's Patrick Tatopoulos. So this is the first one that's not directed by Lynn Wiseman. Um, but this guy, Patrick Tatopoulos, actually did the production design on a lot of the DC films and some of the 300 films. Uh, most recently, Zack Snyder's Justice League, uh, Josh Whedon's Justice League, Batman v Superman. So, And you can tell with this movie that they probably wanted to get a director that knew how to do good production design. It has that medieval type setting to it. Um, this one, more so than the second one, the, the second one really dips its toes into that fantasy uh, that fantasy genre. This one leans right into it. This is almost like a full-fledged uh, fantasy film. It really just reminds you um, of Lord of the Rings when you watch it. In particular, like the ending sequence with the werewolves attacking the castle really just gave me those Helm's Deep vibes, um, that entire battle sequence at the end. So yeah, this one reminds me a lot of uh, Lord of the Rings. It's even got a little 300 in there, I think, with uh, with Lucius kind of rallying up the, rallying up the werewolves. He kind of has that Spartans prepare for glory type speech down there um, in the cells. And he's uh, basically saying like, we are lichens and blah, it's all the stuff that he says. But uh, you can tell he's trying to be like the Gerard Butler type uh, type hero in this film. So yeah, I enjoyed this one quite a bit. I honestly, I think I enjoyed this one a little bit more um, than Evolution. So I might give this movie a three out of Three and a half out of uh, out of five because hey, I I did enjoy this movie. I appreciated it, kind of um, you know shifting genres a little bit. I'm really I really am enjoying this franchise and just how it's kind of shifting and changing and having different takes um, and like changing the story. It doesn't feel very repetitive. It's doing different things every time. And you know, for this to be the third movie, it would have been easy for them to just do another sequel with Kate Beckinsale. Um, kind of like what the Resident Evil films did with Mila Jovovich. She's in every single one of those. Uh, so it would have been easy for them to do just, you know, a sequel, Kate Beckinsale, do something else. But no, they went back and they did a prequel, an uh, origin story. And I think that's pretty cool. So I enjoyed this movie. I appreciated it. Um, I also thought that uh, Martin Sheen and the, and the girl, I'm not going to butcher her name again, but I thought that they had better chemistry than... Uh, than Scott Speedman and Kate Beckinsale. I really liked their relationship. I thought they were really believable as a couple. And um, that uh, that sex scene between the two of them uh, was was pretty was pretty funny. Um, I'll show an image. It's just like Martin Sheen's like hanging off of a cliff while he, she's riding him. Uh, it's like one of the most ridiculous things. But you felt that heat, that fire um, in that sex scene for sure. But um, yeah, so getting into the transfer of this, I thought it looked great, looked spectacular. But to be honest, probably the weakest of uh, the three as far as the transfer. You just really noticed a lot more detail, I think, in the first Underworld and Evolution. Um, I just felt like they popped a little bit more in that HDR. This feels like a little bit more, it's a darker movie. It just doesn't feel like it has those colors uh, to really enhance. Still a great transfer though. And getting into the audio, it's Adobe Atmos. Again, guys, special features. You actually got a special feature on the 4K disc with this one. You have the Rise of the Lycans inside the castle walls. You get theatrical trailers. And on the Blu-ray disc, you get behind the castle walls, picture in picture experience, filmmaker commentaries, three featurettes, a music video, and uh, and more. So yeah, guys, this is a, you know you got some packaging right here that's pretty cool. You got Martin Sheen right there, um, you know, reprising his role. And I, I do like, like I said, I like how it's taking these characters from the first film and then fleshing them out even more. Because Martin Sheen's character wasn't really in the second one um, all that much as all, at all. He, and Victor also uh, wasn't in the second one. So we get to go back, and it really kind of gives us. Um, a, a deeper, it kind of just enhances the first one. I think this one does. And I think that's why I, I like this one. I think it's probably on par with the first one for me um, because I just like the characters of Lucius and Victor. They're, they're probably two of my favorite outside of Kate Beckinsale, Celine um, of the franchise. So yeah, Rise of the Lycans, you look underneath right here, you got some cool 
artwork right there on the 4K disc. So yeah, uh, I'm trying to go through these a little bit quicker because again, I don't want this video to be like an hour long, but we're about ready to get into Underworld Awakening and uh, hopefully there's some kind of awakening. I don't know, we'll, we'll find out, but let's see. This to me, like, I feel like these movies are gonna start going downhill now with Awakening and Blood Wars, but we'll find out. Maybe I'll still enjoy them, maybe I won't, but we're gonna keep going, let's do it. You know, I'm actually kind of surprised by how kind of decent all of these films have been so far, but I am ready for it to all go downhill right now with Awakening, but Hopefully not. All right, guys. So we have just finished uh, Underworld Awakening, and I'm I'm getting ready to talk about this one. This is a film again starring Kate Beckinsale. She makes her triumphant return uh, to the franchise in this one, and it's directed by Mans Marlin, which I, I looked him up. Didn't look like he had too much um of note to, as far as like this is probably the best the biggest film that he directed in his career so this one guys this is where it, it kind of feels like this franchise is running out of a, a little bit of steam a little bit of juice it feels like it doesn't really have that much more to tell within the story which you know they set up a lot of stuff in that first film and i feel like they did kind of pay it off um in the second and third so this one kind of creates a brand new storyline it brings the humans in um, you start off and basically, you know, Kate Beckinsale comes back in, she's frozen, she's she's down for the count, she's in like some sort of a prison for like five to ten years or something when she comes back. Basically, the humans have found out about the lichens and the vampires and they're trying to eradicate them. They're trying to take them all out. So now you've got the vampires and they're warring with the humans and you got some werewolves, you got some super werewolves in there as well. You got Charles Dance in this movie, Tywin Lannister himself. So I did appreciate he Charles Dance always brings a certain level of gravitas to every single performance that he does, but I kind of just feel like um, he's in a lot of bad movies. Like he was in Godzilla, King of the Monsters, which I didn't really enjoy. They kind of just bring Charles Dance in to bring some legitimacy uh, to their film than like just have like one good performance in there. Uh, so yeah, I don't know what to say about this because to be honest, like this franchise feels like it's running out of a little bit of juice and I'm running out of a little bit of juice just talking about it. I just, it, it's starting to, it's feeling very kind of similar. So this movie does have a similar tone, more in line to the first Underworld and Evolution. Uh, than Rise of Lycans. It kind of goes back into that like science fiction, like sci-fi action horror uh, type movie. It doesn't really have a lot of the fantasy elements that the that the second one and the third one had. So it goes back to the basics a little bit with this one. It is a cool story and premise. I like the idea of going to war with the humans, the humans finding out about this underworld and then they're trying to you know take them all out because that's what that's what would happen so they found out their weakness you know the silver nitrate the the um the bullets that explode in light and all that stuff and they're they're basically they're going to war together uh scott speedman is finally taken out of this franchise in this movie which thank god uh he was such a drain on just the charisma of this overall franchise so i'm glad that he finally died um but the guy that comes into replacing the other love interest uh i think played by theo james which um, it was in some of the Divergent films and stuff, but I'm not as familiar with those movies, but he doesn't have any charisma at all either. He's just very boring, very bland. Um, him and Kate Beckinsale, again, don't really have any chemistry, so it's kind of a running theme with her and her love interest in these movies. Um, Kate Beckinsale herself in this movie just kind of feels like she's sleepwalking at this point. She's kind of just going through the motions. There is some good action here. Some really good action set piece sequences in the film. Like there's a really uh, cool like chase sequence like in the opening 15 to 20 minutes of this movie. Um, so there's some good action. There's some good like super werewolf moments. Um, glad they're finally bringing the werewolves back in. Of course, Rise of the Lycans had tons of werewolves, but the second one was really lacking in the werewolves. So this one kind of brings it back in. The CGI for the werewolves is, I don't know when they're going to figure it out. I don't think that they will with Blood Wars. This movie has a $70 million budget. So I would have thought they would have had enough to make them look at least passable as far as like CGI werewolves, but they look bad. They look bad. This is 2012. There's no excuse. They should have looked uh, better than this. It just doesn't really age that well, the special effects here. So um, there's just more convoluted storylines opening up. Like they're trying to open up the world even more. Um, but it, it, again, it just feels like they've said all they've had to say with those first three films. So they're just convoluting the hell out of it even more, bringing in more plot lines, more story threads. She's got a daughter in this one, apparently. Daughter's not very good in her performance. You don't really buy that emotional 
uh, you know, wait between her and Kate Beckinsale's character. Like I said, Kate Beckinsale, she was really good in those first two movies, and you just don't feel that same energy, that same magic that she brought to the first two movies. Because say what you want about those first two, she is great in those. She's a great action like heroine. In this one, she's fine. Like the action is is fine. It's good or whatever, but she just doesn't feel like uh, she's really into it as far as her performance. And I don't really see that improving um, in the next one. So as for the movie, guys, it's okay. It's okay. But to be honest, this is the weakest one that I've seen in this franchise so far. I was bored pretty much the entire way through. Even when the good action sequences, I was pretty bored. So I would give this, I'd probably give it like a 2.5 out of a 5. Pretty middle of the road for me. So Getting into the transfer, it still looks really good. Still a really solid transfer. Still really sharp images. Uh, the colors really pop. The HDR, uh, the detail, facial details, good. So they've been doing, uh, all of these transfers have been great. So Sony did a hell of a job on the transfers. If you were concerned about like how these films are going to look um, in 4K, then don't be concerned about that at all. If you're a fan of these movies so far, they look great. And the next one that we're getting ready to get into um, already has a 4K release, Blood Wars. So the first one and this one has a 4K release. And then the middle three will be the first time uh, coming to the 4K format. So yeah, the transfer is good. Audio, Dolby Atmos again. Um, special features. One thing to note with this one, guys, that I almost forgot to say, but um, the special features, this one has the three-part anime series, the animated series, um, Endless Wars. Uh, which I guess came out around the same time as this movie. That's why they included it in this set. So if you want that anime movie, it's about an 18 minute long, uh, like animated, like cartoon about the underworld. I watched like five minutes of it, but to be honest, it kind of, uh, bored me a little bit, but if you're a fan of that, it's included in this. That's a cool little additional special feature, but you also got, um, theatrical trailers, cracking the underworld, picture in picture experience, filmmakers, commentaries, five featurettes, blooper reel, and more so yeah good packaging on this one I, I like that all these covers are pretty basic but i like the uh the classic artwork under there that but werewolf in the back kind of looks like bigfoot a little bit like a yeti but i don't know it's kind of cool i guess the super werewolves they were cool uh they were cool they just didn't look the best of the cgi so all right let's get into like i said i'm running out of steam with these <laughs> reviews let's get into blood wars let's see what it's got let's see what the finale of this franchise has to offer all right guys so we're arriving at the end of uh of these reviews and we're going to talk about underworld blood wars um so yeah i started this on sunday night as you can tell i've had several wardrobe changes it is now wednesday night when i'm finishing up so i watched all five of these movies over the course of three days and underworld blood wars i did i enjoyed this one i did enjoy this one i i liked it a little better than awakening um, still not a great movie. I was really hoping, like, the way that this movie opens up, um, you know, they bring Kate Beckinsale in, they're gonna have her, like, despite the fact that they think that they bet she betrayed the coven of vampires, um, you know, they're still holding a grudge against her for killing Victor. Um, the fact that, you know, they, they were gonna bring her in to help them train, like, the new generation of, uh, of death dealers to take on this new werewolf force. I liked that, uh, that premise, that setup. I was really hoping to see that play out. And then it just, it just turns into a, a series of double crosses and double turns and, uh, pretty much what the Underworld series is, is known for at this point. If I've learned anything from these movies, watching all five of them back to back to back, uh, it is, it's double crosses and double turns every step step of the way it's just it does not let up so and yeah we get that we get that very strong start and then like 15 20 minutes in we get the first double cross and then there's like 85 more throughout the entire course of the movie um there's even one scene like towards the end where they're all in the room uh with the council and everything and they're all like holding guns at each other they literally like turn the guns on different people in the room like everybody just keeps turning on each other it's like 15 different times it's almost like a comedy sketch at that point it's like watching a sketch of snl uh in that last moment but anyway um yeah this one underworld blood wars for it being the fifth film in this series um you know kate beckinsale comes back in this movie I think it's pretty good. It's not, it's not terrible. None of these movies were terrible. Um, none of them were unwatchable. They were all consistently entertaining throughout. So Blood Wars was pretty good. It was pretty good. They, they kind of abandoned, they don't really abandon the, the daughter storyline, but she's not in it, uh, very much. There's a little bit 
at the end, which would kind of tease maybe a sequel, which if they if they make an Underworld 6, uh, which I'm assuming they probably will at some point, especially since they released this box set, they'll probably see what kind of uh, kind of interest it generates. Um, I would I would watch it. I would honestly watch it because I I'm invested in this story and just what happens, uh, you know, with all these double turns and whatnot. It really gets confusing. It's like this person's turning on this person. This person's a hybrid. This person's a werewolf. This person's a vampire. This werewolf's working for vampires. This vampire's working for werewolves. It's like what the hell is going on here? It's like nobody can just like stay consistent uh to their to their breed or their their group or whatever they're all just like shifting allegiances uh constantly and yeah the whole hybrid thing and people drinking each other's blood and they can kind of uh read their minds through drinking blood it's there's just a lot of weird stuff in this universe but again i appreciate the world building um that was put into all these films and yes I, i'm talking about blood wars but i think that We've gotten to the point in this review series where I am taking a more retrospective look at the entire series as a whole and just talking about everything. As far as Kate Beckinsale in this movie, I think she's better in Blood Wars than she was in Awakening. She felt like uh, she felt more like the character of Celine um, in this movie than she did in Awakening. But yeah, it's uh, this is a good movie. This is a good movie. This is a solid transfer. Another great transfer, 4K transfer right here, guys. Again, this has already been released on 4K, so this is the exact same one um, that they already have out there on 4K. So same with the first Underworld. So really solid transfer. It looked great. I mean, all of these movies look really good. They're all set at night, so you have that... Uh, you know the, the 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 contrast level and the blacks it just everything pops it all looks fantastic very very sharp and polished and um very detailed so i thought this movie looked great um she kind of another funny thing that happens in the movie is uh kate beckinsale you know spoiler alert i'm sorry uh we're at the end of the video but she she dies um and then she comes back as as uh celine the white she comes back as gandalf the white and then takes them all out again but they still didn't get the werewolf effects down like this is 2016 and when this movie came out uh and the werewolf effects still to be honest they look like shit uh very cartoonish there's there's one point where she's fighting the uh uh, one of the main bad guys, there's like 15 different bad guys in this movie, but I think his name is, uh, trying to marry us, I think was that one guy, but he literally turns into the incredible Hulk. Um, and they fight and it's a very cartoonish like battle that they have. Then you have that vampire queen. I forget her name, but she's, she's one of the bad guys. And yeah, there's, there's a lot going on in this movie. Again, there's, it's only 90 minutes, but I, I swear to God, it just, there's so many twists and turns uh it's really hard to keep up in this franchise and like i i know kate beckinsale is good and i know whatever guy she's with in the movie is good and that's like pretty much all i know so um let me rank these movies real quick for you guys and then we'll go ahead and get out of here and again if you have stuck with me this long if you watch this whole video thank you so much uh for watching my ramblings on the uh the underworld franchise and again let me know in the comment section below what do you think of the underworld franchise so let's rank these movies real quick i was thinking about it while i was watching blood war so i would probably put awakening my number five um that's uh and i'll try to I'll, let me get these out real quick so i'll put i'll put awakening at number five i think it's by far the weakest film it's the one i was the most bored through um, and then I'll put Blood Wars at, at number four. This one was pretty entertaining. I, I didn't get too bored when I watched this one. Um, I'd probably still give it around the same score as Awakening, probably a 2.5, maybe a 2.75, but you can't really do that on Letterboxd. So I'll do a, a 2.5, but I did enjoy it uh, slightly more than, than Awakening. And then I would go, um, this might be an unpopular opinion, but I would go Evolution uh, for my number three. Um, it's a good sequel, but it's, it's not as good as the first one. And I really did not like, uh, Marcus, the villain in this one. I thought he was a very weak villain. Um, and then I'll go rise of the Lycans. That's, that's my number two. I really enjoyed this one. Kind of, it's more like fantasy driven, like Lord of the Rings 300 take on the underworld universe. Um, and then you got to go the first underworld for number one. That, that, that by far to me is the best, uh, of this franchise. So yeah, guys, I, I just watched and talked about all five of the, the underworld films. That was a hell of a time. Uh, but this is a hell of a box set guys, a hell of a box set. I think it's going for like $65 right now on, uh, on amazon.com. So that's a really good deal. Cause you got to think about it. That's like $13 per 4k. And I, I would say if you're a fan of these movies, 
Um, or if you're just, if you've only seen, you know, the first Underworld and was maybe looking to see if the, the other ones were worth picking these up, I'd say for $13 a piece, all of these are worth picking up um, on 4K. Again, that's not a very expensive 4K release. Um, and they are all of a certain quality and they're all entertaining. They're all entertaining and they all look great. They're going to look great um, on your 4K TV. So you're going to at least enjoy them visually uh, when you're watching them. But they're fun movies. They're fun popcorn movies. Turn your brain off. Enjoy some fun uh, werewolf vampire action uh, for, I'm trying to think, how long did it take me to get through these? About about eight hours, I would say, because the first one's two hours and the rest are about an hour and a half. So uh, yeah, it's a, it was fun. I enjoyed this experience and I'm glad that I decided to just go ahead and knock all these out in one video because I don't think I would have watched these otherwise if I didn't commit uh, to just go ahead and reviewing them all in one go. So with that, guys, again, appreciate you sitting through this entire video. I'm going to try to whittle this down to around, it'll probably be about 40, 45 minute long videos. So appreciate you watching. Please like this video, guys. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Turn on those bell notifications for all of those future videos. And there will be a link in the description to purchase this Underworld set if you do uh, want to do that based on my recommendation. And we'll see you next time.